This year, the state of Louisiana recognizes Severe Weather Awareness Day on October 30th. This Awareness Day is designed to inform residents of the hazards associated with severe weather prior to the onset of severe weather season across the region. Climatologically speaking, there are two periods of active severe weather across the southern U.S. in any given year. The first occurs during the months of January through April. This is followed by a lull during the summer as the severe weather threat moves north into the Great Plains and eventually the northern parts of the country. The second severe weather season occurs across our area during the fall, from September through December, when cold air masses digging south from the Arctic collide with the warm tropical air from the Gulf of Mexico. These interactions often result in strong squall lines and supercell thunderstorms that can produce severe weather. But just what constitutes severe weather? There are, in fact, three phenomena that are considered severe by the National Weather Service. The first is the touchdown of a tornado. Tornadoes are one of nature's most violent storms, and even the weakest of them can snap trees and damage homes. The second is what are known as straight-line winds. These are winds produced by a thunderstorm that are not associated with a tornado. However, in order to be classified as severe, these winds must be measured or estimated to be in excess of 58 miles an hour. Why 58? While weaker winds may bring down old rotted trees or limbs, 58 miles an hour is the speed at which significant damage to property begins to occur. The third form of severe weather is large hail. Large hail is defined as hail that is greater than one inch in diameter or about the size of a quarter. At this size, hail begins to pose a significant threat to lives and property. If any one of these events are observed or even suspected, a severe thunderstorm or tornado warning will be issued by the National Weather Service. There is often much confusion about what is or what is not severe weather. Now that we've gone through what defines severe weather, let's take a look at what is not considered severe. The first, as we just mentioned, is hail that is smaller than a quarter. Many people believe that any form of hail is severe, but small hail rarely threatens lives or causes significant damage to property. Next is lightning. Lightning is awe-inspiringly beautiful and on occasion can be absolutely deadly. But lightning is so common across our area and a lightning strike so isolated that it would be impractical to issue a severe thunderstorm warning based solely on the presence of lightning. Finally, while winds of less than 58 miles an hour have been known to cause isolated damage, the threat from these winds is not considered strong enough to warrant the issuance of a severe weather warning. Another concept that is often misunderstood is the difference between a severe weather watch and a severe thunderstorm warning. A thunderstorm or tornado watch is issued when conditions are favorable for severe weather to develop, but does not mean that it has developed. A watch can be issued for hundreds of square miles, and not everyone in the watch area will see severe weather. A severe thunderstorm or tornado warning, on the other hand, means that severe weather has been observed either by a person or by Doppler radar. These warnings are much smaller, usually only about half the size of a parish or county but the threat is much more immediate and you should take immediate action to protect yourself and your family. There are several ways you can prepare for severe weather. When a severe weather watch is issued, you should monitor local news outlets for the latest developments and be prepared to take action if a warning is issued. If you live in a mobile home, you should abandon it and seek a more substantial shelter until the watch is over. Mobile homes are not designed to withstand the forces of severe weather and many storm-related deaths have been attributed to residents attempting to ride out severe weather in them. Do not attempt to outrun severe weather in a vehicle. Vehicles can be easily overturned by strong winds, which can result in serious injury or death to persons inside. Once a severe weather warning has been issued for your area, you should move to the center part of the lowest level of your home or business, putting as many walls between you and the outside as possible. This room should have no exterior windows. If you don't have a television in this room, bring a small radio to stay informed about the latest weather situation and to learn when the warning has been lifted. Severe weather claims numerous lives each year, but by being aware of the potential for severe weather and knowing what to do when it threatens, you will be much safer when the next severe thunderstorm moves your way.